everything you've seen so far before this talk, so I'll ask you now. What's one awesome thing that just like just blew your mind? Microservices. Oh, I missed that one. Cool. So I'll catch up with you. Cesium is pretty sweet too. That was good. The historical archives. Cool. Awesome. Um, well, yeah. So we'll go and get our, our started now. Um, so I'm Andrew Turner. I'm the CTO of Esri's R&D Center based in Washington, D.C. I help head up our, our open source policies and strategies and code and also our open data initiatives. And you have to speak, you have to speak into this, actually, because this is, or just yell. You good? OK, cool. Cool. So, and that's something that we're really interested in from the Esri perspective is, is how to enable that. Um, you know, generally for a few decades we've been selling COTS technology to try and solve these kinds of problems and provide geospatial data management, and mapping, and uh, mobile tools. You know, the technology space itself has been increasing even faster than we could track, as well as what um, things like Jim and Raleigh and other cities need to do. So the question becomes: Is how do we enable, and make it easy enough for as possible for Jim? people in the city to engage with those technologies, build their own ideas, right? And that's what open source has been doing. That's why I did open source first and then eventually joined Esri, is like this diagram shows, is, is there's a common stack, something that we provide and we call phone numbers, make sure it all works together. But along every level of that stack, we try and open source components to allow people to do amazing things at those levels or, or have alternatives or plug into existing tools, whether they're ours or someone else's or an open source version of those and do all those through common standards. Um, ones either we've developed and we've given out to the community or the ones communities developed and then we adopt. So we definitely spend a lot of time thinking about that. I mean, uh, ArcGIS itself, if you ever dug under the hood, is actually itself a microservices architecture. Everything talks to each other via a REST web API in JSON. Just most of the time we built it so most people don't see that. Now we're trying to expose as much as, much of that as possible. So Right, because often what I've, uh, if working in a government, if they try and pull a bunch of these things together, it's awesome, but the question is, is it sustainable? Does it work between administrations, between that one ingenious person who put it together? They're really good, they go get hired, right? So the question is, how do you make that to where it can be standardized and grow over time and not like that was one sweet gem, it can't be done again. So, um, so that's something that we think about with uh, then integrating these pieces together, right? So how do we take all these amazing flavors and these ideas and make them so they can all then plug back together and be work? So when someone has a really awesome idea that can work, but they get to focus on the part that makes the most sense to them. Um, so this is actually, uh, gonna pop over to the work. Just gonna show you an example of what this looks like. So, um, nope, not that one. That's a sweet chart library though. Can't see my screen. So for, for us at Esri, we, um, we've either taken most of our open source, our, our different libraries, our 200 or so local government solutions, we've open sourced those, so at the app level. Below that, we've open sourced um, uh, visualization tools like that chart library called Cedar I brought up. We've open sourced Terraformer, which is an open source library to do JSON manipulation. We've integrated with tools that are already out there. So Leaflet's amazing. So we could integrate and just uh, integrate to Leaflet. We actually have supported a QGIS toolbar because people want to use QGIS with an ArcGIS server. So make that very easy to interchange. We've integrated with R and Python to the low level. And we've even open sourced our low level geometry engine. 
because people want to go and scale across Hadoop and do uh, spatial analysis across a thousand servers for an hour. So we've open sourced all of those components to make it people easy for people to go and spin up those analyses, run those things out there, and then visualize them entirely in an open source stack or pull those results back into ArcMap and publish them through an ArcGIS server. Again, making sure these pieces are all interchangeable. You can choose what it is that makes the most sense to you over time to, uh, and again, kind of address that um, integrated society. So, um, present again. Because then I think what we're interested in, in, in the opportunity here and, and the stuff that, that Jim's kind of leading from the government, but also how do we get the rest of society to participate with government? You know, we all, all live in a city. No one cares so much about the city as the people who live on that block. How do we get them to participate not just through voting and community meetups, but actually through code and contribute their ideas into the city and possibly build solutions? I mean, this is what Code for America brigades are doing. How do we enable them to plug into those, the city infrastructure and enterprise as much as possible, yet build in the tools that they're most familiar with or really want to use um, and be most capable um, in producing cool ideas with? Right, and so it's interesting for us, especially one, me sitting in D.C., but also working, um, Esri's in 23,000 governments, is what are the best practices we're seeing across all these governments, and what can we bring back to Raleigh, either from here's some tools, here's some data standards, how do we make it easy for Jim to integrate back into it open addresses without having to go and figure out whatever format they want. Maybe it's just working with Ian and Mike Magursky and saying, oh, there's already an ArcGIS server, here's a JavaScript library that can harvest things out of that. What else do you need? And maybe we actually go and help build that, contribute that to the project, and Jim just goes, sweet, I can just turn it on, and it speaks to that. So we're very interested in leveraging kind of our perspective on seeing across, across states, across counties, across countries, what are these best practices, and how do we then carry them back and disseminate those through the community?
I think you need, the, you need commenting on, on the real time tracking. Wait, what is this? <laughs> so, again, you know, kind of on the emer municipal emerging technology side, uh, we redid this, this zone. So, one of the things that people were concerned about was the building kind of shut down the town. And so, we were able to build kind of 3D landscapes, share it over the web, a couple of different scenarios, and city council was able to get comfortable with the staff recommendation. Some of the height of some of the downtown buildings. Um, and it was actually very, very useful. Cool. And uh, behind the scenes on this, this is actually using the ArcGIS Scene Viewer, but we've uh, developed a new spec called the I3S spec specification that um, we've developed and we've open sourced under actually a Creative Commons license. So instead of going to the typical George is here, but um, let's take it to a standards body. Let's talk about it. We, we developed one, released it now on GitHub, and we're looking for comments in terms of here's when we've built, we've built a reference implementation, and we're looking for other people to weigh in on it. Is this good? Is this bad? It's all under Creative Commons license. Can we, as a community, develop this spec? So can we work with, like, Cesium and other 3D vendors to go and figure out, does this make sense for all of us? And then once that works out, then maybe let's go take it to a standards body. So it's also a way to try and do lighter weight standards development so you maintain the interoperability between these different viewers. So yeah, this part of what we're trying to enable is to make it easier to get data into those different tools is by building something called Coop, which is an open source uh, engine for doing a, um, web API ETL, so converting from one API to another API, whether that's um, Esri's feature services into another specification like Soda or OData or, or Yelp's API, or taking Yelp's data and bringing it into uh, GIS. So you can actually take Waze's data or Yelp's data and actually put it now in the Raleigh Open Data Portal if you wanted to, so using this project. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think generally what we're, we're trying to do it ourselves as a technology builder, we, we write code most of the time, is to actually uh, build the code we think is most useful and integrates together for the city so they can just focus on their task of building roads and providing services, but to make sure it enables through open source technology for people to bring their best ideas at the level they, they, they want to work on, whether it's a really awesome visualization or a deep new algorithm, and not worry about the rest of it as much as possible. And then all those cool ideas make it as easy as, this for, as possible for the city to adopt. So that's all we have to share for you in a very quick 15 minutes. But uh, thank you for being here today. And we're definitely open for any, probably a minute of questions or not. No, we're told no. So I guess if you have a, <laughs> if you need a crook. Um, but we'll, I guess we'll be available out back if you want to ask us or follow up with the discussion. Thank you very much.